Victory in Jesus, spiritual warfare is something that the believer faces every day. We are in a battle, a real battle with the enemy, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness and high places. But I can assure you that the battle that we are in is not our battle and our commander has already showed us what will be the result at the end if we follow his command. The battle is the Lord and he will win. Nehemiah won and so all of God's children will win if we fight according to the rules. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again and cause the blind to see. And then I cried, Dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him and all my love is joy. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. What a word from Nehemiah. In chapter 6, we are in the latter part of that chapter. We are told in verse number 15, so the walls was finished in the 20th and 5th day of the month, Elul, and 52 days he finished the walls. Wow. So much work done in so little time. May I remind you this morning as we begin, not only must we see Nehemiah, and the people of Judah at work, but be reminded that they were also at war with the enemy. We must also see each and every one of us in this war with the enemy. But be reminded the battle is the Lord's and he will fight this battle for us and he will win. As we take a look at this portion of scripture, Verse 15 to 19. There are a few things that we need to pay attention to. Number one, win the war, but don't lose the victory. Win the war, but don't lose the victory. You may say, but I don't understand. Well, I'll explain. We come to the completion of the walls in troublous times. Daniel reminded us in Chapter 9, verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandments to restore and build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks and three school and two weeks. The streets shall be built again and the walls even in troublous times. Though the walls were built, you would believe that the enemy would give up, but yet the enemy did not give up. Believers, Satan is not a quitter. He stays on the field even after it looks as if he has lost the battle and we have won the battle. Many a careless Christian has won the war and afterwards lost the victory. The believers must be careful of this. As believers, we all need to be watchful after the victory as before the battle. Yeah. Don't only be careful before you get in battle or while you're in battle. You must also be careful after the victory. If you can't see Satan walking, then it is probably because he has gone underground. Remember, we are safer when we see him at work than when his agents are concealed. David gives us a perfect example of how to win the battle and don't lose the victory. He gave us the example in 1 Samuel chapter 17 and in verse number 23 and onward. I'm going to see how far we can reach with this reading this morning, a story you know well. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 23 and onward. What are we proving? 
He gives us a perfect example how to win the battle and don't lose the victory. Verse 7, chapter 17, verse number 23. And as he talked with them, behold, there came up a champion, the Philistine of Gath, Goliath by name, out of the armies of the Philistines, and he spake according to the same words, and David heard them. And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, fled from him and were so afraid. And the men of Israel said, Have we seen this man that has come up? Surely to defy Israel is he come up? And it shall be that the man who killeth him, the king will enrich him with great riches and will give him his daughter and make his father's house free in Israel. And David spake, to the men that stood by him, saying, What shall be done to the man that killed this Philistine, and take it away the reproach from Israel? For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? The people answered him after this manner, saying, So shall it be done to the man that killed him. And Eliab, his eldest brother, heard when he spake unto the men, and Eliab anger was kettled against David. And he said, Why camest thou down hither? And with whom hast thou left these few sheep in the wilderness? I know thy pride and thy naughtiness of thine heart. For thou art come down that thou mightest see the battle. And David said, What have I now done? Is there not a cause? And he turned from him towards another and he spake after the same manner, and the people answered him again after the same manner. And when the words were heard which David spake, they rehearsed them before Saul, and he sent for him. And David said to Saul, Let no man heart fail because of him. Thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. And Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go up against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a youth, and this is a man of war from his youth. And David said unto Saul, Thy servant kept his father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him, and smote him, and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard, and smote him, and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them saying he had defied the armies of the living God. David said, Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the power of the lion and out of the power of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And Saul said unto David, Go, the Lord be with thee. And Saul armed David with his armor, and he put on a helmet of brass upon his head. Also he armed him with a coat of mall, and David girded his sword upon his armor, and he essayed to go, for he had not proved it. And David said unto Saul, I cannot go with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. And he took his staff in his hand, and he chose him five smooth stones out of the brook. And he put them in the shepherd's bag, which he had, even in a scrip. And his sling was in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David. And the man that bare the shield went before him. And when the Philistine looked about and saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and older and uh, of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with staves? And the Philistine cursed David by his God. Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give thy flesh unto the fowls of the air and to the beasts of the field. And David said to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee. And I will give the carcasses of the host of the Philistine this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that to all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. And all this assembly shall know 
that the Lord save it not with sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. And it came to pass when the Philistine arose and came and drew nigh to meet David, that David hasted and ran towards the army to meet the Philistine. And David put his hand on his back, and he took thence the stone and slang and slang it, and he smote the Philistine in his forehead, that the stone sunk into his forehead, and he fell upon his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and with a stone, and smote the Philistine and slew him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Therefore, David ran and he stood upon the Philistine and took his sword and drew it out of his shield thereof and slew him and cut off his head therewith. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. And the men of Israel and of Judah arose and shouted and pursued the Philistine unto them, come to the valley of the gates of Ekron. And they wounded the Philistines and the wounded of the Philistine fell down by the way to Shamarim, even unto Gath and unto Ekron. What am I saying? I am saying here that David became very victorious. But watch, David won the war. But I'm coming back next morning and I'm going to show you where David lost the victory. Father, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We lift up your name and we adore you. In Jesus' name, amen. Time is way past. God bless you. Have a great day as you go out and serve the Lord.